Alright, welcome back everyone to another Take Some Video. If any of you remember my first person uh, tutorials in uh, Unity 3D, how to create those kind of games, well I'm going to do something different this time and I'm going to show you how to create a third person game in uh, Unity 3D. So first of all I'm going to show you what we're going to make today and some good news for those of you who are watching this video and are interested in making a third person game, okay? For those beginners out there, okay? So first of all let me show you what we're going to make. Now this is my game Lost Worlds and for those of you who know what my game is, here's a sneak peek at version 0.5. Okay, so uh, the forest has been removed because it's, it's just a complete waste. And you can see now uh, I've added some big shadows thanks to Unity 3's new beast light mapping feature, which you can add some baked shadows. So graphics are going to be a little bit better than what I used to. Okay. And uh, this is going to be my main character. The biggest upgrade is that now it's third person as I downloaded a model from TurboSquid. It was not rigged, so I had to rig it on my own using a biped in 3ds Max. And uh, the rest I was able to do it on my own. So let me show you what we are going to make. Now, let me show you. Uh, if I would click. Okay, now in the video... Uh, you'll probably see the 3D model very laggy or something, but if it's smooth, then that'll be a good thing. Now, if you look, I can look around, look up and down, and if I run, we'll move forward, the character will obviously run. You can jump, and uh, if you press Shift and R, it'll start to walk. I know the animations look funny, but still. Uh, and you can see in the distance a church over there. And over to the right side, there's something like a beach, probably. So let me just switch back to uh, running mode, which I can't get to do at the moment. This is the problem with this game. I usually have problems trying to switch. Okay, never mind. There are some times when there are problems switching from walking to running mode. And here is another place with all flowers over there. The church, hill. And the city is just past those mountains, but I'm not going to show now. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to be making in today's tutorial. Now, here's the good news for the ones who are watching this video. For all you novice scripters and all that who don't really know how to script, well, here are some good news. Um, uh, wait a second. Let me just open up the test project. Now, I've created a Unity package, if you can see right on the desktop, third person character dot Unity package. Um, this Unity package will contain everything to get started with your third person game. It's got the 3D model from Lost Worlds, it's got all the scripts, it's got everything you need to get started with the third person game. So you can download that from the link in the description. Yes, I'm making it free because I don't like, I don't really like to, uh, you know, uh, make you guys pay for it. Uh, stuff in order to make your own game. It's just kind of unfair. I'm not offending Tornado Twins, just saying. Okay. So let's open up the test scene we're going to be using today. And I'm going to show you uh, how to use that Unity package I told you about. Okay. So this is the test scene. And by the way, I'm using Unity 3 again, just saying. So to import that Unity package, download it. It's about 2 MB, very small. Uh, go to assets and import package. If you don't know about Unity 3D, uh, just watch my tutorial on introduction to Unity 3D and the basic steps. First of all, I recommend that you go through the first person shooter tutorials and then you come back to this, okay? If you have, if you know about Unity 3D, then let's continue. So, let's open up this uni uh, third person character package. And it tells you what files it's going to import. Just click import. It's importing right now. Okay, so now I should make a new folder called Player for Lost Worlds. It makes another terrain objects folder, but uh, unfortunately the the skin of the player has been accidentally placed on another folder, and that folder gets created as well. But just ignore that and just let's head on to the Player for Lost Worlds folder. So what you get in here uh, is 
the main player already pre-made with all the scripts added everything pre-made all you have to do is just add it to the game and you're good to go otherwise you've got just the player the model the player with the idle animation the one with the jump animation run animation and the walking animation and this 3ds max file with the walking animation I, I have not tested that I don't know if I'll actually include it so for the lazy ones out there all you have to do is just drag this main player pre-made character into the game snap it somewhere there play the game and now if you take a look you can see on the right side all the scripts have been added animations have been added and you're good to go you're playing the game but for the ones who really want to learn about adding their own characters to the game then that's what I'm going to show you right now now I'm going to show for 3ds max users if you want cinema 4d Maya I suggest you check somewhere else because I'm not really sure about that so on 3ds max what you can see here I've already added the running animation to the biped and I'm going to just fix a couple of errors to this okay so first of all what you notice now this is what would happen in Unity when you import something like this. Now the character is moving forward, right? Now if you were to import it um, and play it, the player, once you start the game, would appear behind the camera and then once he's running, he'll start to go past the camera, which is kind of awkward, and then all of a sudden he stops for a while and then again the animation replays but then he goes behind the camera again, runs forward, goes past the camera, stops. Once the animation starts again, he goes behind the camera, and you don't want that. You don't want that to happen, right? So, uh, in order to fix this, we're going to make this animation in place mode. So, just click the a part of the biped, and then on the biped, you're going to expand modes and display, and, gonna, and you're going to click on in place mode. What this does is make the animation in one place. So uh, this is easier for Unity because uh, included in this package will be the player script. Now what this does is uh, when you click the movement key, uh, let's say the up arrow, it's going to automatically play the run animation and provide movement to the character. Okay. So if you already have movement in the animation, then it'll kind of give it like twice the speed or something, which is not what we want. The player script will handle the speed and everything uh, for the third person player, okay? So, all you have to do is just create the animation and the model and then you're good to go. And now you can see uh, the rest of the animation is just blank. Now you will need to expand this. All you have to do is just highlight the whole character with including his bones and biped. And then you're going to highlight all the keyframes, hold shift, and then you're going to drag it and expand this, okay? that's how you do it I know it's not a proper way of doing it but it's quicker once you're done with that now you can uh, export your character and since this is a running animation I'm, I would export it as player and at the end you're gonna type at run okay just saying it will be easier for you to know what which one it is so once you're done with everything else uh, you're gonna add your player to the game so let me add the idle one just to make it easier. And I'll just press F to focus on him. So play at idle. Once you do that, you're gonna click at the play at idle in the hierarchy view. And you can see on the animation there only there's only one animation. Now we have three animations for this character. Uh which is idle, run, and walk. I'm not gonna add jump right now. So on the animations you're gonna change it to three. Element one is idle. Element okay, element zero is idle. Element one we're gonna change it to walk. So on the play at walk, if you expand it, there will be an animation file right there, which is walk. So I'm just going to drag that there. And then if I go to run, there will be a running animation. So all I have to do is drag that to the second variable, and then you got your three animations. Now, here's another tip as well. Uh, click on the animation. Let's say this running animation, and you've got your settings. Now on the anim uh, animation, on the animation wrap mode, you're going to set it to loop. Now what loop means is, if for some of you who don't know, uh, loop will repeatedly play the animation once it's done. So now that is obviously important, unlike it will finish and it will, it will never play again, that's what you don't want. Okay, so now once you're done importing animations, you're going to add the player script, which is the main important part. 
continue with that. Now the character controller, you can see that green like cylinder, whatever. Now you're gonna put, put align that correctly with the character. So let me just align this guy. Uh, let's arrange the height. Good thing YouTube expanded. Uh, the time limit to 15 minutes so I can explain a little bit more and I don't have to explain freaking fast and there we go now if you want to position it just expand this center menu and you can just position the X and Y axis and the Z okay now under the player script you will have this wall running speed walking speed jump speed gravity and the character now, you're gonna drag player at either idle to, uh, to that variable to fill up the player and under script now this script is a lifesaver. It can handle everything for you. It'll ca it'll handle the animations for you. What it will do is that once you move the character, uh, it will play the running animation. And if you press Shift and R, uh, it will switch to the walking animation. And when you stop or you are at rest, it'll switch to the idle animation. Okay. And you can change the running speed and walking speed just in case if your player is kind of too small and you need to change it. And uh, now, next up, we have to add a camera, that's for sure. So, let me delete this other camera which is already in the game. We don't need that game object. Create other camera. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to align it properly along with the player. So, just go behind him. I'll just keep it a little bit to the side. This is That's what I did to my games as well. Now, I'm going to make this camera a child object of the player at idle model, okay? And uh, if I click the player again, I go to game, uh, sorry, component, camera control, mouse look. Now what this will do is it will help us look around the game. Now let's click play and test our character. Uh, so, as you can see, running works very well. Good thing about the player script is that it will smoothly fade into another animation instead of having to immediately switch to another animation, which doesn't really look good. Whereas here it'll smoothly switch to another animation, so that's working well. And if I press Shift and R, he starts walking very slow. What you can do is just check what walking speed you have to put. Test it out in the game. Still too slow. If I change it to four, four point six is good. So quit the game and then change it to four point six. Now there's one more thing we need to fix. If I look up and if I look down, you can see his feet just go off the ground. At that now that looks like. Now that looks wrong. To change that on the mouse look, we're going to change maximum Y to 20. I know this is not the proper way to do it, but this is a simple fix to it at least. And minimum Y to minus 20. So this will limit the way, the amount you are able to look up and down. Now, see there is a limit to look up and down now, but at least your feet is not levitating into the, feet, to, into the air. Alright, so uh, that's about it. There's your pre-made character, you don't even have to add any rigid bodies or physics or anything. And there's how I easily imported my character into the game. Another note, please make sure you've rigged your characters properly in 3DS Max or whatever. Actually, it didn't take me much of a long time thanks to the biped. So, yeah. That's about it. That's how you make your uh, uh, third-person game in Unity 3D. Although this is not going to be the only one, that's for sure. So I'll make a couple of more third-person tutorials in the future. So as of now, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why subscribe for more? Uh, so thanks for watching, and have a great day.